Hey everyone, welcome to the video. Today, we're gonna to be jumping into a CompTIA A plus core two practice test. Perfect if you're getting ready for the 2-2012-02 exam, or if you just wanna test your knowledge on IT support and troubleshooting. We'll be using Skill Test Pro again, which offers realistic questions that really help you get familiar with the exam format. This test covers key areas like operating systems, security, software troubleshooting, and operational procedures. So it's a great way to see where you stand. So let's get started. All right, we are going to actually jump right into the middle of it. We're going to go all the way up to question 21. So here we go. A technician is responding to a user who's upset about a slow PC. What is the best approach to de-escalate the situation? Explain the technical issue immediately. Listen actively and empathize. Offer a replacement PC. Reboot the PC in front of the user. Or escalate to a supervisor. The correct answer is listen actively and empathize. Active listening and empathy help calm an upset user, building trust and allowing the technician to gather information to resolve the issue effectively. All right, moving on. Question 22. A technician is training employees on password best practices. Which recommendation should be emphasized? Use the same password for all accounts. Include personal information in passwords. Change passwords every 90 days. Write passwords on sticky notes. Or reuse old passwords. The correct answer is change passwords every 90 days. Regularly changing passwords, e.g. every 90 days, is a best practice to reduce the risk of unauthorized access, especially in a corporate environment. All right, moving on. Question 23. A technician is documenting a hardware failure for a warranty claim. What information should be included in the documentation? The user's contact details? The date of the last software update? Network configuration details? Installed applications list? Or failure symptoms and serial number? The correct answer is failure symptoms and serial number. For a warranty claim, documenting the failure symptoms and the device's serial number is critical to identify the issue and verify warranty eligibility. All right, question 24. A user reports a phishing email in their inbox. What should the technician instruct the user to do? Open the email to verify its contents. Forward the email to IT. Delete the email without opening. Reply to the sender for clarification. Or save the email for analysis. The correct answer is delete the email without opening. Phishing emails should be deleted without opening to avoid executing malicious code or clicking harmful links, protecting the user and the system. All right, question 25. A technician is disposing of old hard drives from a corporate office. What is the best method to ensure data security? Format the drives? Use a degausser? Overwrite with zeros? Encrypt the drives? or shred the drives? The correct answer is shred the drives. Physically shredding hard drives ensures that data is irretrievable, providing the highest level of data security for disposal in a corporate environment. All right, moving on, question 26. A technician needs to configure a Windows 11 system to allow a user to run legacy applications designed for Windows 7. What's the best solution? Enable compatibility mode for the application? Install additional RAM. Disable secure boot in BIOS. Enable fast startup. Or modify the firewall settings. The correct answer is enable compatibility mode for the application. Compatibility mode allows older software to run properly on newer versions of Windows. All right, moving on, question 27. A user reports that their browser is slow and displays unwanted ads. A technician confirms that no malware is present. What should be done next? Reset the browser settings? Update the browser? Clear cache and cookies? Check the proxy settings? Or disable extensions? 
The correct answer is disable extensions. Unwanted ads and slow browser performance in the absence of malware are often caused by rogue browser extensions. Disabling extensions identifies the culprit. Now moving on to question 28. A Windows 10 PC fails to install updates, displaying error code 0x8007057. What should the technician do first? Reinstall Windows? Clear the software distribution folder? Run Windows Update Troubleshooter? Update the BIOS firmware? Or check the disk space? The correct answer is Run Windows Update Troubleshooter. The Windows Update Troubleshooter is a built-in tool that can diagnose and fix common update errors, such as 0x8007057, making it the first step to try. All right, moving on to question 29. A Linux user cannot install a software package due to dependency errors. What command should the technician use to resolve this? A yum update? apt get install dash f dpkg dash dash configure rpm dash uvh or snap refresh the correct answer is apt get install dash f on debian based systems the apt get install dash f command fixes broken dependencies by installing missing packages resolving dependency errors during software installation all right, question 30. A user reports that their email client cannot connect to the server. The technician confirms that the server is online and that other users are unaffected. What should be checked first? The network adapter drivers? Firewall rules? DNS server configuration? Server authentication method? Or the email client settings? The correct answer is the email client settings. If other users can connect to the email server, then the issue is likely with the user's email client settings, e.g. incorrect server address, port, or credentials. All right, you guys are doing great. Let's keep going. Question 31. A Windows 11 PC displays a blue screen with a page fault in non-paged area error. What is the most likely cause? Faulty RAM? Corrupted system files? Overheating CPU, an outdated BIOS, or a failing hard drive? The correct answer is faulty RAM. The page fault in non-paged area error is commonly caused by faulty RAM, which fails to properly handle memory requests in the non-paged area of the system. All right, moving on, question 32. A Mac OS user reports that an application is unresponsive and the spinning beach ball appears. What should the technician do to resolve this? Force quit the application? Reboot the system? Update the application? Clear system cache? Or run disk utility? The correct answer is force quit the application. The spinning beach ball indicates an unresponsive application. Force quitting by using command plus option plus escape terminates the application, allowing the user to relaunch it or troubleshoot further. All right, question 33. A user reports that their Windows 10 PC is running slowly and task manager shows 100% disk usage. No single process is consuming excessive resources. What did the technician do first? Disable superfetch, run disk cleanup, Update device drivers, check for malware, or defragment the drive? The correct answer is check for malware. High disk usage without a specific process identified is often caused by malware running background tasks. Scanning for malware is the first step to identify and remove potential threats. All right, question 34. A company's wireless network is compromised by an unauthorized device. The technician suspects a weakest encryption protocol. Which protocol should be replaced? WPA3, WPA2, WEP, TKIP, or AES? 
You would be right if you said WEP. WEP is an outdated and insecure wireless encryption protocol, easily compromised by modern attacks. Replacing it with WPA3 or WPA2 enhances network security. All right, moving on. Question 35. A technician is setting up BitLocker on a Windows 10 Pro laptop. The user wants to use a USB key for authentication. What's required? TPM chip? UEFI firmware? Group policy modification? Recovery key? Or a USB key with PIN? The correct answer is TPM chip. BitLocker with USB key authentication requires a trusted platform module, or TPM, chip to store cryptographic keys securely, unless configured to bypass TPM using group policy. All right, moving on. Question 36. A user reports that their browser redirects to unfamiliar websites. The technician confirms that no extensions are installed. What is the next step? Reset the browser settings. Update the browser. Clear DNS cache. Check the proxy settings. Or reinstall the OS. The correct answer is check the proxy settings. Browser redirects to unfamiliar websites are often caused by malicious proxy settings configured by malware, which should be checked and corrected. Question 37. A technician is configuring a firewall to secure a small office network. Which port should be opened for secure remote desktop access? 22, 80, 443, 3389, or 445? The correct answer is 3389. Remote Desktop Protocol, or RDP, uses port 3389 for secure remote desktop access, which must be opened in the firewall to allow this functionality. All right, almost there. Question 38. A user's Windows 11 laptop is locked with a ransomware message demanding payment. Backups are available. What should the technician do first? Pay the ransom? Restore from backup? Disconnect the laptop from the network? Run a malware scan? Or reinstall Windows? The correct answer is disconnect the laptop from the network. Disconnecting the laptop from the network prevents the ransomware from spreading or communicating with command and control servers, allowing safe remediation. All right, question 39. A technician discovers unauthorized software installed on a workstation. The user denies installing it. What is the most likely cause? User privilege escalation? Corrupted OS files? Incorrect group policy? An outdated antivirus? Or a malware infection? The correct answer is a malware infection. Unauthorized software installation without user knowledge is a common symptom of malware, which can install programs without user consent. And let's look at one more for now. Question 40. A company requires employees to use multi-factor authentication, or MFA, for email access. Which combination should the technician configure? Password and a security question? Fingerprint and PIN? Username and password? Smart card and PIN? Or password and email OTP? The correct answer is smart card and PIN. MFA requires two or more authentication factors, which is something you know, have, or are. A smart card, which is something you have, and a PIN, which is something you know, is a valid MFA combination. And that's a wrap for this round of Core 2 Practice Questions. Nice work making it through, everybody. If you are serious about passing the a exam, well, then be sure to check out more videos on the channel in order to keep building your skills. I've added the link to Skill Test Pro in the description and in the first comment so that you can try their practice tests yourself. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you in the next one. Keep going. You're closer than you think.